Hello, everyone. All right, let's see. Just do a quick speed step just test just to make sure we're all good. We got to take that um, <clears throat> about 20 megabits per second. It should be good. All right, let me uh, share my screen. In Canvas, see where we are, where we're going. Hi, Professor. Could I ask a quick question about the project before we get into the course material? Sure. For the search component that we did in the prototype and then that's mentioned in the project requirements, it talks about how the, the summarized list should be kind of feeding from the third party API. Yes. Would it be possible to have the summarized list be feeding from like our own API and database and then have some other element of the page be feeding from a third party API? Uh, yeah, actually, yes, exactly. So the, um, uh, there could be definitely a merge of the data, some of the data coming from a third party API and some of the data coming from your API. Same thing for the details page. When you go to the details page, uh, that could be definitely a merging of both. Uh, where you, um, you know, some of, you know, half of the page could be from a remote query that you make to a remote API, and then the bottom half could be additional information that you have in your in your database. For instance, uh, say you you uh, click on a on a particular movie, uh, and you navigate to the movie, and all, all all some some of the information might come from IMDb. Uh, includes you know more pictures, maybe the director, the plot, all sorts of information that is uh, this you know the canonical information for that movie. But then you might have on your in your database, you know all the people that like that movie or have reviewed that movie uh, or have a thumbs up or thumbs down or rating. Right, all that information would be in your database uh, and made available through your own API and keyed off of maybe the same IMDB key so that you know that the information that you retrieve from the IMDB API matches to information that you have stored in your database, right? Again, keyed off of that same ID. So you know that things match. Same thing with the result. And the result, when, the, in, when you search and you, you show the results, uh, it might be that if you, if, if you know who's logged in, uh, you might show in that result set, you might show not only the, the name of the movie, but you might show that uh, maybe you've, you've given a thumbs up or thumbs down or a heart, right? Or, or a rating to that movie that you have stored in your database, right? So, so you have some information that, um, that is from locally that you know the title of the movie, you know, the IMDB, you know that you having logged in and, and, and the server knows who you are, you can do a merge and say, ah, you've, you've, you know, previously you have liked this movie, you give it a thumbs up. So some information can come from the remote server and some information can be coming from your database. And you know, it's the same IMDB ID and you can mesh together that information. That'd be pretty cool. I see that that does make sense. Um... I guess the use case I was thinking of is slightly different. Like in our case, the main entity is like a reservation, which would be something that we would store. Or like if we're doing a like a tennis court booking system where you want to be able to search for places where you can book a court and that data would come from our, our API. But if we wanted to, so that would be the search results. Um, but then perhaps we could show something else on the page, you know, if we're wanted to go and get weather information for, you know, the location or, or something else is the requirement strict and that the, the main model or the main entity has to be from the 
from the third party or uh, no you, you you could have a, a an additional query uh, if you're doing a like a gps location uh you can you could augment the the information with a third party api and and look for things around that area uh, maybe things to eat or or you know, weather information for that particular area for that particular time yeah that would that that would that would work as well yes Okay, great. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm that as long as we're somehow yeah. meshing the info that that would kind of meet the meet the requirements. Thank you. Yep. Hi, okay, uh, let's Heather. see. So, uh, very oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's a very good question, I think. So for the web public API, does the API that fetch a location count as one of the uh, viable public API? I think this is for the current, uh, so for the time being, this is the only API that we are going to use. Does that count? Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, what, are you, what are you retrieving? The current location or the, so well, I can the uh, use current the location API to get my current location. So the current location is already part of the browser. The, the browser has an API so it's a library and you can query it saying, what's my location? But, um, and uh, so, so that, that would not be an API. That would not be a RESTful or URL uh, retrieving data for any, anybody or, or are you? Are you retrieving data from somewhere? Mm, we, we are planning on to uh, design an app that uh, was kind of, you can travel with a local person and then you have to specify your location so that you can be the guide for other per, uh, for other people. Um, right. So what, what I'm saying is that uh, uh, when we say API, right? Say it's a, it's a uh, it means a communication API, right? You're communicating with a third-party API uh, that is either RESTful or uh, it's providing some kind of web service that you are retrieving using some kind of URL. Uh, not not, not a, uh, a a function or a method that you can um, embed because of some JavaScript library, right? Uh, I mean, there's tons okay. of JavaScript libraries. The Bootstrap has its own library. Uh, you know, Underscore has a really nice library. Uh, so all these have have uh, JavaScript libraries. So that's not what we mean, right? We mean okay. like a, a RESTful communication API where you have to access data using okay. some kind of URL. Okay. Oh, I think so for instance, right if you have Thank a you. GPS location, uh, you could use mm -hmm. Google, the Google's location API, which uh, if you give it a location, a GPS location, it'll come back saying, you know, what city you're in, what, what town, what, uh, what businesses you have around you, um, you know, what, what events are happening around you, right? So it comes up with a lot of information about your location. Information. I'm sorry? Oh, that is a public API. That is a public API, Restful. yes. Okay, got it. Uh, professor? Yes. Uh, we, we can obviously take this offline. Uh, I just want to ask, like, briefly, uh, can we, like, use you as a resource to kind of... Uh, fine tune our state management in terms of Redux and using some of the different uh, hooks that they offer. Uh, oh, of different course. Functions yes, that they sure. offer. Uh, I had a question up on Piazza. I know things have been crazy hectic on Piazza. I was just wondering if you understood Reoc uh, Redux, like, you know, to its full extent, I'm just trying to learn more about the methods and kind of how to design our state management, things like that. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay, Thank great. You. All right. Great. Thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's see where we are. Uh, we are getting started on the tenth week. Uh, we we're gonna get we're gonna be discussing how to store data permanently. Up to this point, we have we have a uh, we have we have taken a look at how to create uh, dynamic web applications on the front end using React JS jQuery. JavaScript, HTML, and so on and so forth. And, um, and we also saw how to use uh, Redux for state management and using React hooks 
to doing local state management. We took a look at uh, implementing our own RESTful APIs, and we've uh, demonstrated how we can create CRUD operations to store data in a server. Uh, now that data is not being stored permanently. It, it's only uh, temporary inside of the memory of that machine. When the when that server goes down, right, any anything that you might have stored in the uh, in the in the machine's memory, right, it'll be gone when it reboots. So we want to have a more permanent solution, and that's what we're going to be discussing today uh, and also next week. We uh, we're going to talk about storing data in a MySQL relational database. It, up to this point, we, we were storing, for instance, our widgets in arrays. We were instantiating, creating objects and storing them in, uh, in, in an array. We were able to delete, update, find, retrieve, and so on and so forth. But everything's stored in, the, in an array. So today we're going to discuss how we can replace this with a permanent storage solution, uh, in this case with a relational database, uh, MySQL. Uh, later on, uh, in about, uh, I would say, two weeks, we will look at another alternative of using a non-relational database such as MongoDB as a, another permanent storage solution. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss the uh, relational storage solution. So today we're gonna do that. We're gonna in, use the, um, the next assignment as we always do. We use the, an assignment as a, as a conversation piece and, and to get you started and, and introduce the, the topic of discussion. We'll, we'll use that. Uh, to to get us going there and uh, also uh, apparently Wednesday this coming Wednesday has been declared a care day and we have not we have been told that we cannot have class during the care day um, I will I will have office hours uh, during the day uh, so if you want to reach out to me um, I'll, I'll probably hold them in the uh, in the early afternoon um, if you, if you want to reach out, I'll, I'll post it on, on Piazza. So, but yeah, Wednesday, no class Wednesday. Uh, but I, I think we'll be able to cover the, the material that you'll need to be able to complete the, the assignment today. Uh, also the, uh, the fourth quiz is out if, um, it'll be out until tomorrow at midnight. So, you know, if you could, if you could take that and, um, and complete it, it's a, it's a, is regarding RESTful APIs. So everything that has to do with post, put, delete, and also uh, URLs that have a specific uh, pattern, right? You, you know, the, there are some naming conventions, uh, there are conventions on how do you build those URLs. So the quiz is all about that, right? And that you use post, put, delete for certain things, but not others. So it'll ask you all about that. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's get going. We'll, we'll, um, let's introduce the, the upcoming assignment. Uh, also, uh, the assignment number five, again, uh, the, um, the, the server has been under denial of server attack by our own students. <laughs> and, oh, about uh, streaming on YouTube. Uh, I've, ha I've been having network issues in particular when I stream to YouTube. Um, I will, it's, this is being recorded on Canvas. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna download it to my computer and then I'm gonna upload it to YouTube. If you wanna consume it there a little later tonight, I will be uploading it to YouTube. But um, I have been having network connection uh, issues. So I'm just gonna stick to the, um, to the Canvas recordings, okay? Um, okay. Where was I? Uh, yeah, so so let's uh, let's take a look at um, at implementing the uh, at using relational databases as a, a storage uh, as a storage solution. Okay, let's see assignments. Okay, so let's see uh, DB. Okay, so for, for this assignment, we're gonna be building on what we already had uh, implemented in the previous assignment where we uh, created a RESTful API to interact with a widget 
data model, right? We were able to create, re, re, um, create, find, retrieve, delete, update uh, widgets. We were using just a, a simple array. So we want to replace that implementation with a permanent storage solution, uh, which will use uh, MySQL. Okay, uh, we're going to we're going to revisit the data model, right? The same widget.java data model that we had. Uh, we're going to configure it so that uh, it will be stored in a table called widgets. And we'll talk about how to implement being able to uh, implement all those card op operations. But instead of going out to the array, it's going to go out to the database. Right, to do that, we're going to need to do a couple of annotations that we'll be discussing today. We'll be creating a repository uh, that will implement the um, uh, a generic version of the CRUD operations that will allow us to uh, to interact with the data model. Uh, we um, I don't believe you need to modify the web service. Maybe a few things here and there, just tweak it. Uh, but uh, but probably might get away with just not touching it at all. The um, that once we once we have replaced the current implementation of the widget service to use the database instead of using the array, uh, we're going to. Uh, head back to the uh, client side on the on the um, client on the uh, React side. And we're going to implement two more widgets. Right, we'll implement the um, the list widget, and we will implement the image widget. Okay, and and I'll again as always, I'm going to get you going as much as I can, and you're you're welcome to use the, this source code uh, for your own purpose. Okay, um, all right, so let's um. Let's bring the, um, let's open up the projects that we're gonna be using for this, uh, for this lecture. Uh, let's see, we will need, uh, first we'll need the, the Java server, right? That's where we're going to replace the array, right? With using the, the table, the database. Okay, so let's see, under Janunzi, uh, we are, let's see, we have a, Web Dev 2021 Spring in Section 2. And so we'll need the uh, Java server. Let's open that up. Okay. All right. So let's just review real quick what we have here so far, right? Let's uh, start the server. Uh, this will will deploy a, an application, a RESTful application that we can um, retrieve data from this array. Uh, the current implementation is to use the um, uh, the service in the service. Like the current implementation is to use this array of of widgets. Okay, and the service is being used by a controller, right? That uses this uh, service to expose the data model in these third party in these uh, APIs, our own APIs. Okay. Um, so what we're going to be focusing on is re-implementing uh, so that uh, we can throw away this array and instead go out to the database, right? Um, okay. So how do we do that? Okay, so first of all, we'll need a database, right? You'll need to download MySQL, MySQL server, and install it on your, on your local machine. Uh, you'll need to install the uh, MySQL. You can find it. Here, you can look for MySQL community, community server. And you can download it from here, right? There, you'll, you'll have installers for both for Mac or, or Windows, right? You download it, you install it locally on your machine. And, uh, and then you, you'll be able to start it and stop it from your uh, system from your system uh, um, preferences, right? So for instance, on, on a Mac, you can go to system preferences and you'll get a brand new configuration here, MySQL, and it'll tell you whether the server is up and running, right? You can stop it and start it from, from um, uh, the system preferences. On, uh, on Windows is uh, through the uh, system, also the system, right? Which you can see all the, all the uh, I'm sorry, the services configuration and, uh, and you can see the list of all the services that are running uh, in the background and and you can look for mysql and you can start a sql server or stop a sql server from running 
so so yeah, so you can you need to install the server and, and get it running. Once it's uh, running, you'll also need to download a Workbench. You'll need to download Workbench, um, Workbench here, MySQL Workbench. So this is the client. This is the client application that talks to the server. Right, the client application is a user interface application like this. So this is this is our workbench, and um, and this is what it allows you to connect to the server and send commands to create a table, insert records, retrieve records, and use this SQL. Right now, we're gonna do some really really light SQL. We can we can almost get away with no SQL whatsoever, uh, but we will need just a little bit of it. Right, and so. So once you have Workbench going, right, you'll need to create a, a database. Right here, we have one that we created earlier today for the section one. So let's create another. Actually, let's uh, first show you that you'll need to create a connection for, you, you need to create a connection. Let me show you. Uh, you create a connection and we'll call it, it doesn't really matter what you call it, but we'll call it web dev, we'll call it uh, spring 21. We'll say section 02, and this is a connection. Uh, it's connecting to the local server, right? That's running on my local machine at port 3306. That, that's the standard port that MySQL runs at. Uh, we're gonna use a username and password. And uh, this, this, this uh, username and password is the one that, when you install the server, is gonna ask you for a root, uh, um, account for a root account make sure you remember the password that that you use to install mysql right if you forget it you're just going to have to reinstall it right and then write down the password somewhere uh, so anyway after you create after you are able to connect to it you'll be able to create other users you, you'll, you'll be able to create any user you want right i have a few users in here and, and um and um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use a, a, a username that, uh, that is tied to the, uh, some of the instructions that I have for this in the slides, and which, which I ask you to please use this template with your username and with your password, okay? So, so I actually created a username called your username. Uh, and um, and the password is your password, right? So I am able to connect with that with those credentials. So I can say okay, and it creates this this new connection. There it is, right? For this for this section, uh, once you click it, it opens up a connection. It connects to the remote through the uh, to the MySQL server that is running on your machine. Right, and, and now you, we have a live connection to a database. And one, once you're, you are connected to the database, you can create a, a schema where you can store data in that schema, right? Here's the schema we created earlier for the other section. Let's create one for this section, right? So you click here in the schema button and we create, we're gonna create a, a schema where we can store data for this section. So it will be web dev, uh, this is spring 21. This is section 02, and it's a schema. I'm going to copy the schema because I need to remember it. I'm going to say, okay, apply. And then you apply again, close. And there it is. So there's, there's the schema for this section. Right now, this section, is, this uh, schema is empty. There are no tables here. We're going to create a couple of tables here where we're going to be storing our widgets, right, as records into this database. Okay. Um, all right. So we have the database all set up. Let's head back to the uh, to the our IDE. So now we need to tell the IDE, you know, to how to connect to a database. Just like Workbench, we had to tell it uh, where is the server running, what username and password to use, right? What schema do we need, we need to connect? You know, just like we configured a connection from for Workbench to talk to the server. Now we want to do it programmatically. We did it with this UI called Workbench. We want to, we want to be able to do it programmatically from our IDE. So uh, the way you configure, the way you configure it is you go to main and under resources, right? 
we have we have application.properties, right? Right now it's empty, there's nothing there. Uh, I'm just gonna copy the configuration I used earlier this afternoon. Uh, let's see, um, I can say open uh, what we did earlier today. I believe it's this one. And uh, so if you, I'm just gonna copy it from application.properties, there it is. So this is, this is a configuration. This is this is from the slides. This is straight from the slides, right? I'm just going to copy this, and I'm going to go out to our other server for this section, and I'm just going to paste the configurations here, okay? and we can talk about this a little bit. All right, let's talk about this. Uh, so, so the the first line, right, configures this. Um, this uh, project to to log when, when it boots up when the server boots up it reads this file and it uh it's using these keywords right on the left hand side and saying hey i need a data source and i need it to be connected to this server over here and this is saying to saying that we are connecting to mysql a mysql server which is running on my machine localhost it's listening at port 3306 uh, and the, the database schema is the following. It's the one we just created two seconds ago, right? Call web dev spring 21, right? O2 schema, okay? The username and password that I use, this is the, these are the same username and password I use to connect from MySQL. So they are identical, those are, those are it. Uh, the only other one that uh, we care is this one over here that says that I want my ID, my project, Right, to try and generate the the uh, the database right from the the Java code. Okay, so it's going to try and map my Java code, my data model of my widgets and, and everything, uh, uh, any other Java code that I might have in my uh, in my IDE, right, in my project is going to try and and generate an equivalent uh, data model in in the relational database, right? Right now, the relational database is empty. There's, there are no tables, right? So I can refresh. Notice that there are no tables whatsoever, right? But this update, right, either update or create, either one, right, will try to generate the, the database for us, right? The tables for us so that we don't have to do it manually, okay? We can, we can tell it to do it for us, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna use update, so create, what create does is that it creates the database brand new every time the server boots up. And that's fine, right? Maybe to get us started. Uh, and, you know, it creates a table, uh, all, the, all the constraints and everything, right? But after a while, you know, when you start inserting data and you have lots of data in the tables, it's very annoying that it would blow away the entire table and recreate it brand new every time we start the server. Update is kind of like a... Uh, the next step and where, where it says uh yeah don't blow away the database right if the tables are already there right then then you know don't recreate it okay um maybe maybe you know if something has changed from the last time that we had a data a, a data maybe you added a new field maybe you changed the data type of a field or something what we'll try and do is do incremental changes to the database right as you change the object model, it'll try to change the relational model, right? These, this technique, this, this, um, this technology is called ORM. It means object relational mapping, right? It's going to try and map an object data model. It's gonna try and map it to a relational model, right? And the intent is that it is going to allow us to stay as far as, po as, far as, uh, as, uh, as we can, to let us stay in the object world without having to be burdened with the relational world, right? At least we have to create the database, which we did. Okay, so let me show you how cool it is, right? If we if we take a look at the the data model that we have so far, is right now it's just this uh, widget class, right? And the idea would be that we want to store. Right, right now we're storing instances of widget in an array. Of widgets, right? Let me let me close this. Right, we're storing these widgets where, in the, 
in the widget service. In the widget service, we have an array of widgets. And so we're storing it over here. But we don't want to do that, right? We want to store it not in a widgets array. We want to store it in a widgets table for permanent storage. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is that we go through a data model, right? And uh, we're going to be using, we want to be use, use this technology ORM, right? The object relational mapping uh, technology. Well, Java has a specific ORM technology. You know, pretty much every single language and infrastructure uh, has its own ORM implementation. You know, Java has a few, Python has a, has a whole bunch, right? C Sharp has a whole bunch. You know, every, every language you could possibly think of will have some ORM solution. And they all, they all have their own quirks, right? But they'll uh, try to do basically the same thing, right? It allows you to work with the objects and it will convert any modification, anything that you do to the object, right? It'll try to convert that into changes in the database, okay? So, so to enable that, right? We already, we already have the connection to a database, right? We already did that, right? We configured that over here in the properties. So, so we know how to connect to a database. We know how to connect to a database. Uh, we need to bring in libraries, right? That will implement the ORM, the, the object relational mapping technology. That is not out of the box. Java doesn't come with that out of the box. You need to install uh, several other libraries, right? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add them in, my, in our palm, right? The palm is where we define all the libraries that that we need to uh, for implementing our project, right? So we're gonna add a couple more dependencies uh, here, right? So that it'll download those dependencies, all those libraries so that we can use that technology. So we already did that in uh, earlier this uh, afternoon. I'm just, I'm just gonna copy from the POM file, right? And again, this is all in the slides. Uh, so we're gonna copy two things here. We're gonna first copy the library that is going to allow us to communicate with MySQL, right? So I'm just gonna copy that and you can just copy it anywhere inside the dependencies here, dependencies. Right now we have two dependencies, right? So just, I'll put up that at the bottom, okay? So this one is the library that allows any Java code, right? To, to connect to MySQL, right? So, I mean, that, that's kind of the low level stuff, right? We need to be able to have our Java code talk to MySQL, right? So that's that's a minimum that we need to have. The other thing that we're gonna need, right, is the ORM solution, this ORM solution. And that's implemented in a library called JPA. JPA stands for Java Persistence API, okay? So it's a, it's a, a set of libraries that uh, can look at Java code or Java object, Java classes, and if we, you know, annotate them with some magical incantations, right, it'll know to convert them into uh, relational tables, right? So let me copy that dependency as well. And I'll just paste it under here. Okay, notice that my IDE has detected that we have changed a couple of things here in the POM file and it says uh, Maven project needs to be imported. So we'll say import changes. So I'm gonna click on that and notice on the left-hand side here, it's gonna start downloading libraries, okay? And copying them here, right? To be able to, to use this, to be able to connect to the database, to be able to do the mapping between the objects and the relational world. And it looks like it's done. Okay. So once we have that, we can head over to the, the data model and start using the library. Okay, so what do we wanna do? Uh, we want what well, we you know we want these widgets not to be stored in an array widgets. We want it to be stored in a table, in a database table called widgets. So how do we do that? The way we do that is by annotating this. We're gonna do it an annotation, and we're gonna annotate it with entity. See that this entity here? Not the second one. Look, notice the second one is deprecated, so don't use that one. So this first one. Okay. So th so this this entity is a uh, it's an interface, right, that lives under Java X that persistence. Uh, and so everything about JPA is under Java X persistence, right? So that's kind of like a package for the JPA uh, library. Okay, and entity, entity is the entry point to the library. It says, 
it's, it's, it's being applied to this class over here, right? And, and, and basically what it says is that we have, we are intent on converting or mapping this class to an equivalent table in the relational database, okay? And, and so, so there, are, there are two requirements. One is that we need to have an entity, add entity. And the other one is that we need a, one of the fields need to, needs to be declared as the primary key, okay? In our case, we're gonna be using ID. Now notice that the, you know, this ID, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you, usually in a Java application, you know, we don't have a unique identifier. There's no real need for it. Uh, but we did add, a, add it here with the intent that we knew that we were gonna store this in a, in a database, okay? So we had added already, so it's there. Uh, so, so we need to annotate this and tell, let, let JPA, the JPA library, that this is going to be our primary key. So we annotate it right above the, right above the, 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 the field or the property that we are annotating as the, uh, as a primary key. So those are, those are the two requirements. That's it. Well, well, obviously you need, um, you need an, an, an no argument constructor, right? The default constructor, it's always required in all these cases, right? But we, we did that already. Okay, so we're done. Let's uh, restart the server. Now notice what happens when, we, when you restart the server, the server is going to, now JPA is going to be part of the boot, boot, booting of the, of the server. It's going to read the properties file or application that properties file is going, to, is going to try and log in. It's going to parse the Java code looking for these entities. And when it finds it, right, and look at, it, it reads the class and it finds all these fields, right? The ID field, topic ID, type, size, right? All of these, not, notice what it does. Look at that, right? Let's copy that and let me show you. Okay, notice that this is, is this creating a table call widget with all the fields, see that? ID, size, text, topic ID, type, primary, all the, field, all the fields that we have here have been converted into a create statement uh, that makes columns in the database. See that? How cool is that? You can, you can now go, go to the schema that we had created earlier, we can do a refresh, Right, and, and if you open it up, you'll notice that now we have a table. Look at that, the widget table is there. If you open it up, you see that you have columns and you have those columns that were just created, okay? You know, without us, you know, doing any SQL whatsoever, right? Uh, notice that we have the, the fields from there and notice that topic ID, notice that it's underscore ID, see that? Oh, I, I guess we must have misspelled it. Oh, we, we call the topic IC. <laughs> yeah, we call the field, we misspell the field. But nevertheless, notice the, that it's smart enough to understand that the naming conventions are different in Java than are in SQL, right? In Java, we use camel case, right? We, we capitalize each, each uh, the first letter of each word, right? Uh, to, to, uh, um, to explain that this is a compound word as opposed to the way the naming convention is in, in uh, SQL, right? And so instead it uses the underscore because Java is, is, um, um, is case sensitive, whereas uh, relational databases are not case sensitive. So we use underscores on the, in the relational database. Uh, hold on a second, I, I hear some noise, just a second. Ah, sorry about that. Can you hear me? 
Yes, we can hear yes. you, Professor. Okay, great. Okay, so all right, there we have it. So we 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 were able to create a a an equivalent relational model from this object uh, model, right? And that's what ORMs do. They all do the same thing. Okay, whether it's uh, this is a C sharp implementation, a Python implementation. Uh, you know, PHP has one, and uh, C has one, C++ has one. All the languages uh, will have a, an equivalent mechanism for bridging these two worlds. Okay, but notice that the, the, the naming convention, right, the, the name of the table that it chose was based on the name of the class, right? So it just took the name of the class and it inferred that the name of the table should be widget, okay? Now, a, the, uh, usually, a, the, a good name in a relational database, right? Uh, usually, we choose uh, just like just like in objects, we choose nouns. Uh, also, in relational database, we choose nouns for the names of the tables. Uh, now, in Java, the naming convention is those that these nouns should be singular, whereas a, a good naming convention in a relational database is that the table should be plural. Well. Uh, we can we can um, uh, abide with that uh, naming convention by overriding some of, some of these kinds of things, right? So, for instance, we can we can override the default naming convention by using additional annotations. We can say uh, table right allows me to change things such as the name. I can change the name and say I don't want the default name. I want I want widgets. Okay, this is this is a not only because this is a convenience for you know choosing my own name, but I might be communicating with a with a uh, with a database instead of tables that already already have names, right? And but I don't like those names because they don't look pretty maybe in the Java world. So I can override it, right? There might there might be some really weird name in the table with uh, lots of acronyms and underscores everywhere. Uh, so I can I can just say well this this object maps to that weird looking table up there okay uh, but here what we're doing is that we're saying I, I'm asking you to generate the table and I would like that name not the default name okay the other thing that we would like to do is that um, this this uh, ID uh, as far as as we're concerned we are generating those IDs we were you know we're, we're randomly choosing those IDs, right, with some time uh, uh, integer, what, right, long integer. Um, uh, but, and we would have to do the same thing in a relational database. We would have to choose this. These primary keys have strict rules, right, that they, they have to be unique. Uh, so I don't want to be bothered with that, right? So, so every, every, every um, database has ways to to delegate that work, right, of, of choosing these unique identifiers to delegate that on the database, right? You know, uh, for instance, Oracle has what are called sequences where you can say, hey, you know, for this primary key, go fetch me a unique identifier uh, from a sequence of a really long sequence where you can choose the first one, the second one, and so on and so forth. You just, just, just get me the next number in that sequence. Uh, SQL Server has what I call identities. In, um, in MySQL, they have what is called an auto increment, right? Where you're, you can label a field to be an auto increment field, where it will start at a particular value, usually one, uh, and then it will auto increment automatically. Every time you create a new record, it'll auto increment to two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth, right? Indefinitely. Or, or it might even start at 10 and then you know, skip to 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on and so forth, right? So we want to we want to kick off that feature. We want to uh, and and the way we do that, I mean, I don't want to do it in SQL. Instead, from the Java code, we can annotate it as follows. We can say that this field is a generated field, right? The value it's a generated value. Right? The value of this field is auto generated by a, the database. Now we have to choose depending on which database we are using, what strategy is it is it being. Uh, what strategy are we using to generate this data, right? Is it, is it being pulled from some kind of sequence? Is it being just auto increment one after another? So you can configure here the strategy. And for MySQL, right, the auto increment field that starts at one and then continues 
uh, forward, right? It's called the identity. So, so generation type that identity, you know, kicks off the uh, the auto increment um, feature. Okay. All right. So let's let's rerun this. Let's restart this and let's see what the server does this time. Okay, so notice that what, the, what it did this time is that it uh, sent out another command, slightly different than the one before. Okay, notice that now the table is called widgets, okay, all, uh, with a plural, and our ID now, notice that it has an auto increment in it now. See that? If we go out to the table, to the table and we refresh, we'll notice that now we have two tables. We have the previous table that was there, widget, right, singular, and we have widgets, okay, which the ID field has been configured to be auto increment, right? If we, if we um, say that we want to alter just to see the definition, we'll notice that the auto increment check mark is there, right? It has been configured to be auto incremented. Make sense? Um, all right, let's see, what else? Um, there's no data in it, obviously. We haven't added anything there yet. Uh, but say we wanna add additional fields, right? We, 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 we came and we, we realized that, hey, we, oh, we forgot a couple of new, other fields. So how, what, what can we do? Well, first is one of the, one of the widgets that we, we're gonna be using uh, is, has a field of width and, and height, right? So we add them We say that these are integer, with and integer height, okay? Also, uh, I believe the, um, the image widget has another field called source. So we can say private uh, string source. Okay. Uh, we can, um, we can generate the setters and getters. We need those setters and getters, otherwise we can't read them. So we say code, generate, setters and getters, right? All of them, we say, okay. We generate, and if you, rem if you rerun the, 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 the server, right? It will notice that the table, it's the same table where right? we haven't touched the name of the table. So it's gonna try and look at what's happened to widgets. It'll realize that the table already exists. So it's not gonna blow away the table. So instead, look what, what it does, right? Notice that it generates all these commands. So it generates all these alter commands, right? It sends an alter the table widgets and add column height, right, of type integer. And same thing with source, it adds its varchar, right, it's a string, and then with it's an integer. Right, if we go, if we head back to the database and, and refresh, refresh, you'll notice that now we have these additional fields, height, source, and width that weren't there before. Also here, we'll see that if we refresh the query, notice that we now have height, source, and width that were not there before. Make sense? Everybody good? Okay, so so we were, we were, we were able to uh, we were, we were able to uh, convert our data model our object data model into a relational data model. Okay, and um, so we we now we now have a place, right? We have a place to put our data, right? Before our data, for now, our data lives in this array. So we want to move this data over to our new our new place, right? Our our, our relational data model instead of using this object data model. Okay, instead of using this, this uh, array here, we wanna have it permanently stored in the data, database. So, so let's copy this information to our new implementation in the relational world, right? Uh, let's see, um, we have um, the first one, we have these, these two widgets belonging to topic ID ABC123. So let's do that. Uh, let's see, topic ID, there we go. Let's do that. Okay, those two. And, um, and we'll create another three with topic ID 234. 
Okay. Uh, the first one's a heading. So type is heading. Let's make it a little bigger. Uh, so heading, this one's also heading. This one's paragraph. The second one is paragraph. And the last two are also paragraph. Oops. Okay. Um, they're all size one except the one in the middle. So it says maybe size one, one, two, one, and one. Okay, what else? Uh, the text, the first one here. Let's put that in there. Make it a little bigger so we can see. This one's Lodum Ipsum. We have widgets four, two, three, four. Oops. And now uh, this is both Lodum Ipsum, these two. Okay. Let's, uh, now we can apply. Now the changes are not yet in the database. Not until you click apply will those changes go through, right? Right now they only live in the user interface and the user, user interface is just a very convenient way to write the SQL that actually does this, right? These are the commands that are gonna go out to the server and they're gonna execute on the server. The user interface is just a convenient way of writing this instead of you writing it manually, right? At the console when, when talking to a database, right? So we're gonna say apply. And then it's going to say, okay, the data is has been saved. Notice that now we have the primary keys with values that weren't there before, one, one through five. And they were auto-incremented. They were auto-generated. Notice one, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we have we have a data model. We stored some data. So this is now lives over there. Uh, what we're going to want what we want to try and do is now see if we can replace right, all this implementation so that we don't need the array anymore, right? We wanna get the data, not from the array, but from the remote database. Instead of creating a, uh, an, a, a widget in the array, we wanna create it in the database, right? So how do we do that? So to talk to a database, right, we'll need to create what are called a repository, right? So JPA defines what is called a repository. So a repository is the interface between the Java world and the data world, okay? And, and uh, we can create it from scratch or we can use one of their templated uh, implementations, right? They already have a whole bunch of these uh, repositories that know how to insert, update, delete, and interact with the, with the database, okay? So let's do that. Uh, so we're gonna create a new package here where we can put our repositories. So we'll say new package repository repositories we have you have many repositories and so usually you have one repository per entity or per table right that you're interacting right so in this case we have a java class it's actually not a class it's an interface and it's going to be called widget repository okay so our repository, uh, we're not going to implement it from scratch. Instead, right, we're going to extend a, a repository that already exists. A repository that provides CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete operations, right? So let's, um, oops, there we go. And this CRUD repository needs to be configured right, because it's a generic repository. I mean, we want to we want to implement a specific repository for widgets, but we're going to build it on, in terms of a generic repository. And this generic repository needs to be configured so that it can be specific to one of the tables or one of the widget, one of the uh, so that it's specific to the widget. So the way we make this generic repository be specific to a specific uh, data model is by configuring right in these in these pointy brackets what it is that we want to store. All right, so what do we want to CRUD? We want to CRUD widgets. So we put here widget, right? That's what we want to CRUD, right? Um, the, other, the other thing that it's going to need, you know, the, the, the second argument that it needs to configure 
is the data type of the primary key, right? So the, our primary key is, I believe it's long, right? So there it is, so this is long. That's all it needs, right? Now, this CRUD repository implements a whole bunch of out of the box, default generic implementations, some of which, right, it's, it's all we need. The other ones we're going to maybe perhaps override because we don't like specifically the way they work, right? Uh, so, but for the most part, right, we can just stick to the, to the default implementation. Okay, so let's take a look at what we can do with this out of the box, okay? All right, so we have the here, notice it's an interface, right? So there's no implementation, right? All right, so let's go back to the service. We're gonna try and use this CRUD implementation right, to replace this array, right? So let's bring in the, our brand new repository, right? So the repository is the widget repository. There it is. And we're just gonna call it repository. Now notice the repository is an interface, right? So we cannot instantiate an interface, right? And also these, these repositories are, are meant to be application wide resources, right? So these are, are going to implement, you know, a database connection, a live database connection that is going to be sending data back and forth. So these, these usually are resources that are meant to be a single instance, right? They implement a, a, um, a design pattern called singleton, where you have one single instance hanging around and it's being shared by everybody throughout the application. You just have one of these. Now, usually these, uh, these singletons, um, since it's, it's an application-wide resource, right, usually we are not responsible for the instantiation, right, the creation and, um, and managing the life cycle of these, of these resources. Instead, we delegate that to the infrastructure, to the server. The server is going to be responsible for creating these things connecting to the database, logging in, you know, making sure that the connection is stable, blah, 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 right? And creating a session to the database. Uh, and so, so the way we delegate that to the infrastructure is that we use an annotation called auto-wired. Auto so auto-wired is saying, hey, I don't wanna deal with the life cycle of this, of this resource and I'm delegating it to the infrastructure, to the server in this case. The server will instantiate this We'll create an instance, it will create the connection, it will log in to the, to the database, right? Make sure that it's logged in, blah, 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 right? And then it'll provide me a reference in this variable so I can use it here, right? By the time I get to here, right? The repository is already connected to a database, right? It's already going using all the configuration that we, that we used here, right? Okay, so let's try and use the repository to replace one of our functions here, right? Let's see what we have here. So right now we have, we can create the, the, cr the C in CRUD. We can read, how about this one? This one looks pretty easy. So right now this one is returning the array right? and we want to replace that. What can we replace it with? Well, let's look at the repository, what, what's inside of it, right? If we look at the repository and we say dot, you can see all the functions that are available here, right? Let's see what we have here. So we have equals hash code to string count. We can count how many records there are. We can delete, right? We can remove everything. We can delete a single record by its primary key. We can also retrieve, oh, look at that, find all. What is that? That looks promising, right? If you select find all, right, is indeed, it is indeed the retrieval of all the records, right? Uh, for that particular entity, for that table, okay? And, and if we look at the, 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 the return type, it returns an enumerated data type, an enumeration of widgets, right? So if we, could, if we return this, okay? Notice that it's gonna complain. If you hover over it, you'll see that it says that, that this find all retrieves or returns an iterable of widgets, meaning something where you can iterate over right, that you can go with a for loop uh, or with a dot next, 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 next to get the next row or record or instance from the database. And, but, it, but we're asking that we want a list of widgets, not an iterator. So it could be as simple as 
casting, we can cast the whole thing to a list of widgets. So it will convert the iterator, iterator of widgets, it'll convert it into a list of widgets, okay? So that looks promising. Let's check it, let's try it out, right? Let's start the server, right? And try to retrieve these widgets. Okay, let's start the server. And, and we remember uh, um, find all was, was being accessed through the widget controller. How? Using this, see that the API widgets. Okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, looks like I have an, a mistake here. Um, description, blah, blah, blah. Required being, could not be found widget repository. 2102, 2102, the injection point has the following annotation, factory. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Consider defining a bean, yada, 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 widget repository. Uh, where is our widget repository? Okay, this is the widget repository. Uh, import widget cron repository. Uh, widget repository. What's it saying? Allocation field to start description field repository. And yada 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 yada. Widget required a bean of type com that could not be found. Oh, really? Widget repository. Let me go back to the service. A widget repository, there it is, 2102. What do you mean you can't find this right there? There it is. Oh, public abstract. No, not abstract. This is public interface, not a class. This is an interface, sorry. And this is not implements, this is extends. Sorry about that. Let's restart the server. Okay, so this is gonna start the server. It's up and running. We can now try to hit that URL, right? It'll be localhost uh, 8080. It'll be API slash widgets. There we go. There we have it. So notice that this is the data that is coming from the database, right? Not from the array, right? If you remember the array was the array in service, right? Had IDs, such as you know one two three two three four. This is getting the IDs from the database one two three one two three four five right. And if you don't believe me, right, let's create a new a new widget, a brand new widget. So let's go in here and let's create widget number six here. You can say uh, maybe another heading, right? The maybe for this topic ID. And, um, and maybe uh, the text is, believe me, and the uh, size is two, and that's it. Let's apply, there it is. So if I refresh this, notice that there it is. That's the brand new widget that we created in the record in the database, see that? All right, excellent. So we were able to replace that one function. What about the other functions? Right, so let's take a look at the other functions. What else can we replace? Uh, so yeah, so we replace this one. How about, how about, um, do we have find widgets by ID? I don't believe we did, we implemented it. Okay, we didn't. Uh, how about this one right here? Find widgets for topic, find widget for topic. Um, let's leave that for a little later. Actually, no, we do need it, right? Yeah, so let's let's implement it now. All right, so notice that the uh, repository has functions to implement all sorts of things, right? For instance, it has for deleting widgets, it has uh, for updating widgets, okay? So for instance, for delete widget, right, we have, we have what? We have repository dot, Delete, see that? And then delete by ID. And we can provide just the ID here. See that? And then we can just comment out this over here and return a one over here, right? So, so it already has a lot of built-in 
um, built-in functions that allow us to create to to uh, to interact with the database, right? Also, the the uh, create a new widget, creating a new widget is also a, can be can be implemented, right? So, for instance, um, you know, widget set topic uh, topic ID. That's great. The ID we don't need any of this, right? What we can do instead is we can use the repository. We can say repository, repository dot save. Save is going to save the instance of the widget to the database, right? That's gonna invoke a, an insert statement, right? That goes gonna go out to the database, right? To store that widget as a new record in the database, okay? It, this one over here is gonna be we don't need it anymore because it's going to have an auto increment on the database when the record gets instantiated, right? Where, you know, this is our insert and it's going to return our new widget. This is exactly what it does, right? It's going to return the new record, right? With its new ID and everything, right? Stored in the database. It's going to go back to the server, right? So, so it has a lot of out of the box implementations. Okay. Um, well, let's wait for this one. Uh, just a, a a little later, right? We'll we'll implement the update. No, not that one. Sorry, we'll we'll implement the update a little later. It's a it's a little more involved. Uh, so I'm going to leave that for last. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at this one, right? Find widgets for topic, right? So that's one, that one's interesting. Okay, so find widgets for topic is trying to retrieve widgets uh, for a particular criteria, and the criteria is to retrieve it where one of its field is equal to something, right? Notice that it's comparing if the topic ID is equal to some, some argument that we pass along, right? Well, we won't find anything in the repository that will allow us to do that, right? So we, can, we have a whole bunch of finder methods, right? You can retrieve all of them. We already used that. You can retrieve it by ID, but this is the ID of the primary key, right? If you know the ID, you can you can pass it along and it'll retrieve that one record, okay? Um, find by ID, right? Uh, so all these are by the primary key, by the primary key, and right? so so nothing about comparing or filtering the widgets, right? The records by a particular field, right? So we need to implement that ourselves. Let me show you how. It's actually very easy. It's actually very easy. So the way what we would like to be able to do is, you know, if we go out, go back to the to the database, right? Notice that here we have a right, a query here that allows us to retrieve all the widgets, right? We have all the widgets here, but what if we wanted to retrieve it by a different criteria, right? So, for instance, maybe I don't want all the widgets. Instead, right, I only want the widgets where a particular um, a particular condition is true. For instance, I only want the ones where the topic the topic ID <laughs> I see right is equal to something like A B C one two three right. So if I run that, right, this one returns to me all of them, all six um, all six widgets. But this one it's going to return me only three of them, one, two, and six, because they all belong to ABC one, two, three. Or I can change this to be ABC two, three, two, three, four. And that returns me a different set of widgets, right? For those that have the topic ID two, three, four. See that? So I want something like this. I want to be able to do that. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it all in one line. Okay, and I don't actually need uh, the name of the schema, right? If this is the default schema, the, the default schema, I don't really need the, the name of the schema in front of it. Okay, so this is the this is the query that I want. I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna bring it over to Java, right? And I'm gonna go to the repository. So let's go back to the repository. So in the repository, remember the repository is the one responsible for talking to the database, right? It's holding the connection to the database, has logged in, right? And it can talk to the database. So I wanted to use this query, 
right? So that I can go out and talk to database, okay? So how do we do that? Well, um, and I wanna be able to pass this as an argument. Right? That's a, that's a, um, right? I wanna sometimes be ABC one, two, three, sometimes ABC two, three, four. It'll be some parameter. And I wanna be able to do this, right? Uh, programmatically, right? I wanna be able to invoke this query maybe with a function or something, maybe something like, um, maybe like, you know, public, you know, returns a list of widgets and maybe the function can be called something like, you know, you know, find me uh, widgets for some topic, right? And I, I, like, I like to be able to pass you, right? And a string with the ID of that topic, right? Topic ID, I wanna pass you that. So, so how do we do this? Well. It turns out that JPA allows you to do this very easily, right? It allows you to declare this to be a query. I can say this is a query, okay? That has the following value, and that this is a this is a native query. Native meaning this is this is literally what I want you to use to talk to the database. I want you to take this exactly as it is and send it over to the server, right? right? Don't try to interpret it. Don't try to, you know, make your own magic or anything, right? This is my magic. I know my query. I want you to use this, right? So, so I need to tell it that this is not native query, meaning, you know, don't interpret this. Do exactly as it is, okay? Um, uh, the, only, the only thing perhaps that I would want is that this, I don't want it to be hard-coded. It should be a parameter that I could, that should be mapped to this variable here. So, so we can we can name this, this as a variable. So we say colon, right? And this could be, you know, TID, the name of, of, a, of a variable, which we can then map to this here. We can map to this parameter. So we wanna map this parameter to that variable. And the way we can do that is by using the at param, and say, okay, map this topic ID to what? Map it to the per, to the TID variable, right? That is right there. Make sense? All right, actually, this actually works, right? We can go back to the, the uh, service and we can now rewrite, we can rewrite this, um, this uh, find widgets for topic, right? Instead of doing this, right? We can co comment those, this whole thing, right? And use our repository. We can say repository dot find widgets for topic. See that? And we can pass down topic ID, right? And we can just return that. See that? All right. All right. We'll try it out in a minute. We'll see if that actually works. Finally, let's uh, let's uh, let's change this update widget. So this update widget, right? What we want to do is that right. I mean, right now, what it's doing is that it's iterating over the array, looking for the looking for the 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 uh, object that we want to modify, right? And then it modifies the values, right? And it puts puts in the new the new object. So we want to do something similar, right? We need to first find the record in the database, right? we have to find the record. Once we have that record, we can then modify its value and then put it back and, and save it, right? So, so let's do that. Right? So what we're gonna do is that we're going to first fetch the widget that is in the database, right? So the original widget uh, from the database. So we already have a function that does that, right? It's called uh, you know, find, oh, we don't actually, we don't have one. And so uh, I think we do, uh, there's a, there's one in the repository actually. In the, the repository, if you remember, there is a find by ID. See that, that one allows you to retrieve a widget, a, a record by its ID. We have the ID, it's right here, ID. Um, now this find by ID, uh, what it does is that it actually doesn't return to you the the uh, the widget object itself it returns to you a kind of like a wrapper object uh, that is useful for testing whether the values are null and things like that. We can just unwrap the the object and by just saying dot get. 
Right, so that get retrieves the actual widget instance, right, that was stored in the database, right? You gotta be careful because this could be null. You could get a null pointer exception. So you wanna try it out first, okay? Uh, actually has a function there that says um, dot if present, see, is present. You can check for first, is, you know, did you find a record with that ID? Did you find it? If it is, okay, now you can get it, right? I'm being lazy here and I'm just getting it, right? But careful, right? You could get an exception. All right, so this is gonna return the original widget that was stored in the database. And, and now, now, now that we have it, we can update it. We can make ch changes, right? One of the things that we might wanna do is that we might want to change the, the text, right? And, and the value of the text could be, you know, the, the new value of whatever you typed in the, in the UI, right? Anything you might've typed that you changed in the reducer, blah, 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 right? We need to send it over and we receive it here in the widget, right? The new, the new widget, the new data. So we can copy that. We can get the text. So we can copy over the text that's coming from the, from the UI, right? And we're copying into our new, uh, or into the original widget that is in the database, right? Uh, so, and we would copy all the values, the source, the width, the height, right? All, everything over. We need, to, we need to be careful that, you know, there might be fields that we sent over from the, from the browser that we, we didn't fill out. Maybe we left it blank, right? And so you, you should check to see if, if they're null, right? If it's null, yeah, don't copy the null, right? Um, okay. So once we copy over all those values, we can uh, we can save it back to the database. We can say um, repository, save the object back to the database. Save it back to the database and, and just return a one. Okay. Now this one is only one of the fields. And so you'll need to remember to do all the other ones, right? To do the copy all the other fields, testing for null. Okay, uh, uh, let's see, um, there's a question in the chat. Professor, how do we handle joins in JPA? Yeah, so joins is, a, we will talk about joins. Uh, we, we can have um, one-to-many, many-to-many that, uh, that um, allow you to have records that contain other records, and we'll talk about that uh, next week. And you don't need it for the for the assignment, but we will talk about it. We'll talk about that uh, feature. Um, but you know, just as a as a um, preview, right? I mean, this query, this query can be anything you want, right? You can pass in foreign keys, primary keys, right, and do the query, the exact query that you want, including joins, right? And you just need to pass in whatever parameters you need to to implement that join, obviously, right? but there's a more advanced way of doing it, but we'll cover that next week. Uh, all right, so we update the widget, we return a one. All right, let's try this out. Let's see if this blows up, right? Let's, let's kick off the, the user interface and see if we can use this now, because notice that I don't, I don't, believe, I don't believe this uh, widget is being used anywhere. Let's see, the create statement doesn't use it. The find all doesn't use it. The find widget for topic doesn't use it, delete, and the update doesn't use it either, right? So we should be able to just blow this away, right? We should be able to just, you know, comment that out and restart the server, I believe. Let's see, let's restart, see if it complains. I don't believe it should complain. We're not using it anymore. Okay, so let's kick off the, uh, the client side who's using this uh, service. A, let's see, um, we'll need the uh, section two. So, okay, section two, Java client react. Okay, let's, let's bring that up. And let's run it here, let's run it. It's bringing up the project, the React client. And let's uh, go into the table, course one. 
the, let's see, we have a topic one and topic two. Oh, I, th I think I have some hard-coded values in there that are listed down below. Let me take out the hard-coded ones. And let me head over here. Let's look at the implementation of our widget list. Okay, there's the mapping. And I had created these hard-coded implementations here. Let me comment that out for now. There it is. Okay, so these, presumably, these are the widgets for one of the topics. Okay, notice that, there we go. See, so notice that it is indeed, right, displaying the topics for ABC one, two, three, and ABC two, three, four, right? Uh, and we can change it. So this is a widget for topic ABC one, two, three. We can change it. If we go to a database and retrieve all of these, right? There's a topic ABC one, two, three. And we, if we change something here, just put some exclamation at the end and do some apply, right? And we refresh, you'll notice that indeed the changes are there. So definitely it is connected to a database and retrieving that data from the database. Right? What about all the other stuff? Can we, can we re remove something? Let's remove this over here, this lotum ipsum. And so we remove, um, I think this one, number two. Okay, so let's remove that. Let's remove delete. Let's refresh. So it looks like it's gone. It's coming here and refresh. Notice that indeed record number two is gone. See that? How about creating a brand new one? So we create a new one. There it is, a new widget for ABC one, two, three, right? We can add a couple and refresh. Looks like they're permanently being created. We refresh here. Notice that indeed we have the three new records have been created at the bottom. Okay. Uh, and let's see, I'm not sure if we have finished the update. Uh, we never implemented the update. Yeah, I'll leave that to you, right? So that you can play around with the uh, update yourself. All right, so there you have it, right? So we've been able to successfully replace uh, the array, right? With the implementation of a table and repository and use the use using the uh, technology of JPA that allows us to map the class, classes and the object model to a relational model, right? So let's take a look at now at implementing some of the some of the user interface, right? That is going to use some of this, stuff, excuse me, all, all the stuff that we've been describing, okay? Uh, so once you, once you have the database up and running, we're asking you to implement two new widgets, okay? The, we're gonna implement the list widget and the image widget, okay? Now the, the list widget is going to allow users to create Lists, lists of items, okay? Um, they're either gonna render as bullets, as an unordered list, or they're gonna, they can render as ordered lists, right? And each one has its own items. Uh, it's gonna have a, uh, an, an edit icon, you know, represented here by a cog, that if you click on the cog, it renders in like an, an edit mode, okay? And the edit mode, allows you to select whether the list is ordered or unordered, right? By default, it's unordered, right? If it's, if it's unchecked, it's unordered and it displays like this, right? If it's checked, then the list is ordered. And when it renders, it renders like that, right? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, the items can be def de defined by filling out a text area. So this text area, you know, allows you to type the values for the items, right? So they, they are added one at a time in, in, a, in its, its own line, right? And what the text area does is that uh, each line, right? It, the way it knows that it needs to wrap is that, is that it breaks the lines using a new line. A new line character is a backslash N, backslash N. Uh, so, so let's use that to, to render that, right? So let's create a couple of these widgets and give them their own type, right? It'll be the list widget and the, and the next one is an image widget. Let's take a look at 
let's look at uh, implementing some of these, right? And rendering one or the other depending on the type. Okay, so let's do that. Let's create a couple of placeholders for the widgets, right? So under widgets, right, well, let's create two new widgets. So this will be this is the um, list widget. Okay, and let's implement some just some boiler, boilerplate code. So this will be you know, import React from React. And then we'll do um, const list widget. And this will render a return. A div. And this will be a um, uh, a list widget, and depending on whether I'm being edited, right, edited, then then I will either if, so if I if I am being edited, then I render a something like this, right, maybe a label that says um, uh, order or unordered, right? So like a checkbox. So this will be an input type of type um, a checkbox. So type type checkbox. Okay. And uh, and then and then maybe a a, a a piece of text that says ordered or dead. Okay. Now also down below, right? Maybe we can do a, a break, maybe. And put here something like um, uh, item uh, item list, and down below it could be this could be a text area, and and this this um, this area maybe we can make it make it look a little prettier, and this could be a a form control. Okay, all right, excellent. Uh, so if we're not being edited. If we're not being edited, so not editing, it, we could render an actual list, right? And the list could be UL, right? Line item one, two, three, and just a few of these. So one, two, three, four, three, four, five, and four, five, six. Okay. Um, all right, so we have the beginnings of of the, of that widget, right? Let's see how what, how this renders. So we have here, so export um, default list list widget, okay? So in the in the um, in the widget list, what we could do is that as we're iterating over this, right? Remember that we right if it's a widget. Then we, if it's a heading widget, we, we render the heading widget. Well, if it's a paragraph, we render the paragraph, depending on the type. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing with a list widget that we just defined, right? If the type is list, then we're going to render, oops, we're going to render the list widget. Okay. And we're going to pass the same thing. We're going to pass the widget and whether it's being edited, right? So we'll pass also what the actual widget. All right. All right, so let's let's head over here right, and see if we can see any any list widgets. I don't believe so because uh, I don't believe we have any any list widgets. But let's see, that's that's fine because we can we can totally create one in the database, right? So for instance, this this new widget here, by default, it, these are heading widgets, right? So let's let's go back to the database. Oh, where is it? Okay, and let's create let's let's make this one of these. And this one will make it a list widget. Okay, so let's update. And if we head back over here, we refresh. Notice that indeed, see that it's it's rendering the unordered list, right? One, two, three, with the text, right? As we as we want. So it's it's in this side of the it's in it's in this side of the uh, not being edited. If we click on edit, notice that it didn't work. What? 
Uh, so are we not passing editing? Edit, 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 editing. Oh wait, not edit. No, it's it's called the editing, right? Editing, editing. So editing. There we go. Let's try it again. All right, there it is. So notice that if we click here, there we go. So it swaps to the edited. So we can say okay. Right, it's being changed. All right, so that works perfectly. Uh, we can make this a little longer, right? By by saying the text area, we can say rows, how many rows you want, and we can start maybe 10. I think 10 is a nice and wide area here, right? So so let's let's add some content in here, right? So you know, so each item uh, needs to be in a separate line separated by new line character. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna go back to the database, right? I'm gonna put that in the text over here, including the text. All right, notice notice the uh, the value here. I'm gonna I'm gonna apply it. I'm gonna apply it. You'll notice here that the text, see that the, the new lines? See those new lines? That's what we're gonna use, right? That's what we're gonna use as a clue on how, when we render dynamically the list, right? We're gonna use that to break, to split the string on new lines so that we can iterate and then render the the uh, the text, okay, the, the, the list. Let's apply there, okay? And um, so let's refresh, let's edit. So what do we want here? We want the the um, we want the content, right? We want the the, the content uh, of the value, right? And and actually, let's um, uh, let's let's tie it, right? Let's tie this to that value, which is the text value, right? So we can do that, and right, we can say text area. The value of this, the value. Uh, will be the widget that text, right? There it is, the text is there. But when we say, okay, we don't want this hard-coded value. Instead, we want to generate this dynamically from the text, right? So we can grab the text and we can split it, right? We can say, take the widget, right? Take the widget text, split it, Split, so split is going to create an array. Separate it, all, all the items that are separated by the new line character, right? So that's going to create an array of all the items separated by a new, new line character, which we can map over, right? And we can do the following. We can say, well, here's each each one of the items. And we, what do we want to display? We want to, we want to display the following, a line item whose value is the item. See that, right? So when I edit, there actually, there it is, it's done, <laughs> right? Notice it's rendering as a, um, as, a, as a bullet, right? I can see the, the text, I can see the text right there. And when I say, okay, right? I can see that it's being rendered and it's being split and it's dynamically generating that, see that? And uh, the only other thing is, is that this, this could be ordered or unordered, right? Uh, so we would need that on the, in the database. We need a field here that, that, can, can, that can remember whether this, what type is it? Was it ordered or unordered, right? So we know how to add new fields, right? We can, we can just go to our Java class and add whatever new fields we need, right? So if we go to the widget here, the widgets in Java, we can we can uh, add a new field, right? And maybe call it ordered. We say private a boolean ordered. Okay, and we can generate the the setters and getters. So generate okay, and we can um, we can restart the server. So this will alter the table by adding a brand new field called ordered, right? Which needs to be able to represent a Boolean 
value, which either is true or false. So the way the way booleans are one way, a typical way that booleans are represented in in SQL is by using the bit, right? Using bit, meaning the value can be either zero or one. Another very common way of doing it is using tiny int, but bit works just as well, right? So if we go back here and we refresh, notice that we now have an ordered field column, right? So this list, we can say one or zero. Zero meaning it's unordered and one meaning it is ordered. So I'm gonna say one, I'm gonna say apply and um, ordered, we don't want the character one, we want the value one. I'm gonna say apply, okay. And uh, if we refresh, notice that we have that one. So coming back over here, we can say, in coming back on the, on the user interface, we can say, uh, that the value of this checkbox is that value of the order. Right? We can say that, is this checked? Well, it is checked if the widgets.ordered, right, is true, right? That's coming from the server. The server is saying it's gonna be converted in Java either with true or false. And so that if we go here and we render it and we edit, uh, oh, it doesn't, it didn't, do it. Why check? Checked. Uh, checked. Type checkbox. Uh, hmm. Let me let me look at the value. Let me render. Let's render here uh, down below. Let's render here JSON dot stringify the widget. What does that render down below? Let's see. Size, text, ordered, where's ordered? Uh, separated, blah, 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 topic. That's interesting. Where is the ordered? Uh, maybe I need to restart the server. Let's do that. Yeah, let's restart the server. Yeah, probably doesn't, probably doesn't uh, know about that new field, right? Because we haven't started the server. So it has a, an old version of the widget class. Okay, so start the server, let's refresh. And let's edit. Okay, there it is. See that, it's checked. It's checked because the ordered, ordered is true. So it's, it knows how to convert the bit zero one in the database. It knows how to convert it into the top level Java data type of Boolean true false. Okay, which is perfect because also in the JavaScript, it's also can be used for uh, you know, rendering this correctly. Uh, but, but, then, but then if it's false, I'm sorry, if it's, if it's ordered, right? We can decide that if it's ordered, we should use OL, but if it's unordered, we can use uh, UL, right? So in the, in the UI, right, we can, we can use this, the, uh, we can use the order, when it's being rendered here, right? We can say, you know, if, right? If this is ordered, so if it's ordered, right? We can use, we can take this, right? And then render OL, right? Or otherwise we can render it, we can render it using UL. So if it's not ordered, meaning false, right? Then this would be UL. Make sense? All right, so notice that there it is. See that it's rendering with one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, five, instead of bullet, uh, bullet points, right? And if you change it here, you say that this is zero, right? And apply, and this is uh, the number zero, apply that. Okay, we go back and we refresh, right? This should change to unordered. There it is. See that? So there you have it, right? So that's 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 great. That's uh, exactly what we're looking for. Uh, but you should be able to change that using the user interface, right? So that's that's uh, I'll leave that up to you. Okay. Um, the uh, for the for the image widget, let's take a look at the image widget, right? So the image widget. 
So the image widget, so new JavaScript um, image widget. Uh, so this is going to be import re uh, oops. React from React. And then we'll implement here a function called image widget. Right, and we're going to export. Okay, and so this image widget is going to receive the same arguments before, right? It'll be the actual widget and whether it's being, if we're editing the widget. So the, 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 so the widget is going to render either, either an image or a form to edit that image, right? So if it's, um, so if we're being, if we're not editing, right, if we're not editing, then this should render an actual image. That's an IMG with a source equal to whatever the value of the source is, right? Um, like that, right? And the source might be, you know, widget.source. Okay, whatever the value of that is, uh, editing. But if you're, if you are editing, then, then you should, you, you need a form. And the form, as the assignment says, there will be three fields, right? The three fields, The three fields are for you to specify the URL of the image, right? So some image on the, on the internet. Here, we're not asking you to upload this image to the server. We're not asking you to store this image in the database or anything like that. This is a URL to an image that is out there on the, on the, on the web, right? And somebody just can copy that URL and then paste it, right? So let me show you. So say, um, so you look for um, a starship, spaceship, starship. SpaceX is starship, right? So image and uh, say it's, uh, I don't know, whatever, this image. And if you go there, you can look at the image. And you can say, um, open image in new tab. There it is, notice JPEG. See that, that JPEG, I can copy that. I can copy that and I can go to the database. And so let's, let's make one of these an image widget, image. And there's a source here, see source? Actually, I don't know if that source is big enough to hold this. Let's paste it, let's see if it complains. So we copy this. So it's a very long URL there. Let's say, let's apply. Let's see if it complains. Maybe it's too, maybe it's too, too small. All right, looks like it's okay. And uh, let's uh, retrieve, say, see if it uh, comes back. Yeah, it looks like it came back. All right, looks okay. It's type image, yes? Uh, so some, somebody can, can type that into an input field, right? And so it would be the input field uh, would have the value would have of that widget that src, right? And this would be a form control plus two more fields for width and height. Okay, so maybe you know, in the database you could have width and height. So this could be, I don't know, 300 width and height. 200. Okay. So, so for, so here you can, you can, you can show the values for that here, right? So let's see what that looks like. Uh, let me update that in the database. Probably I need to say apply and update the height and the width. So, so here in the, in the, uh, in the UI, right? When we are iterating over the list, over the uh, widget list, you can say that if the type, oops, if the type is image, then I want to render the image widget, the image widget. Okay. And so, so if we refresh, notice that, that we have that image uh, in there. It's a little bit too big, uh, but we, if we edit it, right, notice that we have the, the size and the, and the URL. 
right? Or we have the actual image, right? So, so we can apply the sizes, right? right? In the image widget to the image tag, we can say that the width is the widget dot width, right? And that the height is the widget dot height. Oops, height. there we go. Right, and notice that it takes the size of 300 wide and then 200 high, okay? So obviously, you know, you have to complete this, right? You need to be able to update it, you know, save it back to the server, talk to the server, do the state management here, connect it to the reducer. So I'll leave that all, all up to you. Obviously, you need to make it look prettier, blah, 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 right? Um, yeah, uh, so there you have it, right? So we were able to introduce um, the, uh, the database connect connection, right? And being able to interact with it using JPA, implement all the various CRUD operations and replace the use of array for an actual table for permanent storage. Uh, and then, and then we were able to, you know, integrate it with a, a user interface that uses that, right? To to be able to, um, you know, use that to render that content either as a list or as a as an image. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, that's all I have for you. Any any questions? Um, one question in the paragraph and the uh, heading we did, we had the option of selecting what type of widget the widget was, and it would switch between one or the other. Um, do we still need to do that for these ones? Should we be able to switch between image and uh, list type, uh, heading or paragraph? Uh, yes, they, they, they should all be interchangeable. So yep. the, the second question on, on that is, if you create a widget for an image and then you decide to edit it and you turn it into a, a list and then you do it again, you're going to have like leftover values on the, yes. the table, right? Yeah, exactly. There, if, if we, I, I don't suppose we have to do it for the assignment, but would it be necessary if you were actually doing um, production code to clean those values up before you change the widget? Or would you, yeah. would you, last, would you just let the, the table get like polluted with, with non-use data? Uh, well, it, it depends uh, what the uh, requirements are. Uh, I mean, it could be that uh, you, wa you want to be able to have a, a, an object be um, remember things from when it used to be something else. Uh, and in particular, when you have a, 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 a hierarchy of inheritance uh, where you have a, you know, a top level widget, right? And that has certain aspects that are common to all its children. Like for instance, width and height are fields that might be common to all the widgets, right? Uh, regardless. So, so even if you, even if you change the type, uh, you want to leave the width and height for all of them. Um, if you have, you know, uh, something that is a, a round shape uh, or an oval shape, and that has a radius or maybe two radius radii, uh, and so so where sometimes it has just one radius, sometimes it has two radii, and you want to keep them both. Uh, do you want to be able to toggle between the two? Uh, so sometimes it is convenient to to keep track and maintain those those values uh, uh, if if there is a relationship. Uh, so it all it all depends what is that you're, you're building whether you want to be able to have it or be very clear that you'll clear out all the other ones. And so yeah, that, those kind of questions come in when when you have uh, long hierarchical uh, inheritance chains, uh, where you know do you want to maintain all the data between the hierarchies uh, or not, right? You only want to keep the ones for that specific instance, right? And, you know, it depends what you want. It, it's up to you. Thank you. Yep. Anything else?
So I'm, I'm going to push the this code from the server and the client so that uh, you can use it for your own purpose. Uh, I believe I you know for the on the server side, I believe I've almost completed everything for you. There's very little for you to do. And obviously, the, the challenging will be to you know install the server, right? Getting the connection going, getting work uh, workbench going, creating the database, uh, connecting your your project to the database. I think that that will be the the challenging part, and obviously getting this up and running. Okay, uh, you're not required to get this up and running in a remote database on Heroku, right? We will do that next week. Right? We'll, we'll I'll show you how to. Uh, connected to a remote database, right? We need to have this running in a remote database on Heroku. So we'll we'll leave that for next week. That's a uh, it'll be um, it'll be painful a little. <laughs> it'll be it can get painful connecting to a remote database. Okay. Uh, all right, folks. Uh, thank you. Good night. Thank you, Professor. Thanks, Professor. Uh, thanks.